Hello and welcome, dear listeners, to episode 130 of the Reform Gamers, the show all about theology, video games, and really all sorts of things. I'm your up-and-coming host, Logan. And I'm his co-host, Adam. Uh, Real quick before we get into the show, a little bit of housekeeping brought to you by dear VIP Luke Strain. Uh, At some point in this episode, I'm going to tell you how you can enter to win. Well, not really enter to win, but like request to win. Here's the dealio, okay? Went on to Humble Bundle the other day. Bought a couple things because it's super cheap there. And I want to give away, I want to give away a copy of Hollow Knight on Steam for one of you dear listeners. At a random point in this episode, I'm going to give you a hashtag of how you can tweet at us, Facebook, whatever. The first person to contact us with that hashtag gets that code and I will get it out to you. So at a random point in this episode, I will get that hashtag to you and you can tell me all that stuff. So keep listening, dear listeners. That's the housekeeping for this episode, Hollow Knight on Steam. There you go. Adam, good sir. Welcome to the Reform Gamers. I don't know why. Whatever. Welcome to welcome the Reform Gamers. Welcome to you also, Logan. Welcome to you. Just welcome to the show. <laughs> A little bit of what we've been playing. Brought to you by Richard Marroquin. Adam, man, what you been up to? I think I can guess, but but what you up to? Uh, Yeah, so I've been dabbling in that uh, Red Dead Redemption mm. 2. Tell me about it. Uh, really interesting, just the the time slot that i've been playing so we've had a a sick household for the last kind of two weeks since red dead came out so i'm like this is about to be real interesting because well i was supposed to be gone when it first launched that weekend so on that friday but because our daughter got sick we ended up staying in town and didn't leave until saturday morning Mm. so i actually got to play some on friday so i was like this is neat but I also didn't get any sleep the night before, so I actually fell asleep literally with the controller in hand playing the game. So I'm like, I don't think the game's actually that boring. I think I'm literally just that tired. So I paused it. I'm like, I'll come back to it later. But I, I played, I'm probably mm, 10 to 15 hours in. I was going to say, I, 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 see you, I see you playing it a lot when I get online, so I know it's got to be up there. Yeah, I'm probably closer to the 15 than I am the 10, I would guess. Because Mm -hmm. there were some nights where I was playing from like 2 to 4.30. uh, 4.30 to 6.30, whatever shift I had with our daughter. Mm -hmm. And so I'm like, I'm not sleeping anyways. So Uh I might as well get Red Dead. Got to redeem that time. I hear you. Exactly. Red Dead Redemption? Red Dead Redeem? Redeem the Zap? (laughs) Yeah. And so, but... Uh, I've got I got thoughts, you mm-hmm. know. I got opinion on the game. Yeah, it is. Uh, it's a very good game. Uh, the game looks great. The voice acting is is well done. Uh huh. Some it took me a second to kind of get down with the cowboy accents. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But now that I kind of adjusted to it, I'm like, okay, this makes sense. It's the Wild West. Uh. Knowing John Marston and playing Red Dead 1 is kind of cool. The more you get to interact with that character, uh, even though he's much less pixelated in this version as he was in the original. Mm -hmm. Uh, So that's kind of interesting. Uh, There's a lot to do. There's a lot going on. Uh, There's between the hunts, between random interactions happening, between just robbing people and houses. I mean, there's a lot that you can do. Um, let's see how to, I mean, there's just a lot of different things to talk about. I would say I'm having a good time. I keep wanting to play it. Mm -hmm. Uh, Fortnite still has its teeth in me. So I still play a decent amount of Fortnite in the afternoons. Mm -hmm. But like I said, I'm about probably 13 to 15 hours in. I'd say this game is really good. Early consensus. While it is really good, it's definitely flawed. The, the shooting mechanics are still a step behind a lot of games. I mean, you you think of a game like, okay, third-person shooter, like a Uncharted. Like, I feel like Uncharted is still, like, head and shoulders above Red Dead. I feel like the shooting is just laggy. The player movement, I get that it's the Wild West, but it is so slow. 
like the fact that I have to walk, I have to like walk across my camp and I can't like get across it in any fast capacity, like a place that you spend the majority of your time, you have to walk everywhere. That's super frustrating. Mm -hmm. The map, the maps, whatever. I know some people were complaining like, oh, it takes a couple button clicks, but it's really, it's just, you know, start XX or something like that. You can get right in well, the map. Well, really, with, a the, with the map, though, if you just hold down the options button, or I guess whatever the pause button is on the Xbox, it takes you straight to the map. If you just hold it down? Yeah, pro tip, if you just hold that down, it takes you straight to the map. You don't, if you don't have to just, you don't have to hit start or the options button and then X, if you just hold down option, you're telling me that'll take it straight to my map? Mm-hmm. Yeah, just hold it down. It opens your map pro right away. Well, that's nice. Yeah. Then I have to try that out. Yeah, man. Uh, but the map hasn't been a major, it just is what it is. But, and so, and I, and I was describing it to someone, I said, it's like GTA. Mm -hmm. Now again, when you're outside of your camp, when you're inside your camp, it's not as much because your player moves so slow. But I feel like it's still got that rock star herky jerky. Mm. Like, you'll be standing there and if you go to run, it like throws his neck in his arms or something like that. or. If you're jumping on a, a horse, it's like, it's just, it's not super smooth in my opinion. Yeah. It's still got a lot of that rock star Grand Theft Auto flavor where the, those movements aren't as smooth or, you know, I want to just walk in this door. I can go super slow and open it or I'm slamming the door wide open every time and like busting through and I'm like, where's the medium in this? Why can't I just be a normal person with a little bit of pace? So. It's it's a good. I mean, the story's interesting. Uh, I just opened up. I, I think I'm in chapter three now, mm -hmm. and so there's some interesting things even at the beginning of that. Again, there's just a lot that you can do. Um, yeah, I, I I don't see it being my favorite game of the year or game of the year, uh, just in general. But it's still mm -hmm. again, I don't want to live in the polarized society where I have to say it's the worst game of the year or it's the best game of the year. It's a very good game. Yeah. I if I was giving it a score right now, again, not having finished it, it's like a eight and a half, nine out of ten. It's still pretty good. But yeah, it's still a very, very good game. You know, sometimes people hear like, if you're not saying it's the best game ever, then you're crazy again. We don't have to live in that world, people. We, yeah. we see it on the Facebook group all the time. It's like, just say it's a good game. Yeah. It doesn't have to be a world shaker. I'm going to sink a lot of time into this game. Hopefully with the multiplayer online stuff later also. Oh, I can't wait But that wait doesn't for that. mean it has the favorite game of the year. Or the game of the year, even from a tech standpoint. I know a lot of people say it's got all these things. I'm like, it's a, it's a really, really, really good game. Mm -hmm. But as of right now, I just don't see it passing. And that might be just because of when I played it. You know, on the heels of Spider-Man less like a month ago. Uh, which was like this super action-packed game. Mm -hmm. This game is is Cowboy Simulator. Um, <laughs> it's just much, much, much slower. So that's just some adjustment that I've had to make. But now that I've made it, I feel like I am really enjoying the game. It's just a, a change of pace, no doubt. Right. It's definitely a very different uh, way of playing a game, too. The little bit of time yeah. that I've put into it, it's much slower in pace than what I'm normally used to, but it's designed in that way to where I kind of appreciate that, that aspect of it, but it's still just, I mean, it's not the game that I've been playing. <laughs> yeah. And the other thing is, lot, but that's it. <laughs> as a guy who doesn't have all the time in the world, I don't want to say they disrespect the player's time. Right. They want you to ride your horse from point A to point B. Right. But when I'm, if I've got an hour play session, I feel like half my time is on my horse. Yeah. And again, it's not horrible because there are different interactions and things that can happen, but that's just hard at times. Cause I'm like, I want to knock out some missions, mm -hmm. but it takes me forever to get from point A to point B. And I, I I'm not even as interested in doing the side stuff because I want to get missions done. Like if I had some options here and there, maybe that would change my perspective. But you know, you really, you hear a lot of people say, like, you need to play that game in two-hour chunks almost. Yeah. But I don't always have that, so that discourages me at times Yeah, to play it. It's like, okay, you have your professionals who are like, I played it for six hours, seven hours, eight hours straight, and I'm like, most people don't get that. Right. 
So why? Yeah, I don't want to say why, but well, just uh, why? Why uh, design a game that way? You know, it, well, exactly. I don't because there's different gamers who have different, but it's just your casual. I don't even want to say casual. Your normal video game player is not a professional. He's a professional businessman. He's a professional, you know, accountant. He's mm-hmm. your mailman. He's a pastor. He's whatever, and they don't have the huge time chunk. So it just seems it's it's just hard. Now again, I understand some of it with all of the different things that go on in the world, but I would say give the option for fast travel. Mm-hmm. Uh, I open that up, but still, it's it's like vanilla. Yeah, fast. Well, it's not even that good of a fast travel. So yeah, but again, doesn't take away. It's still really good. It's just part of that. I just wish I had more time. Yeah, and that's kind of how I was. Like I said, a little bit. Like I've played it a little bit uh, here and there. Just, just like maybe I think I've got maybe five hours in total. And what little bit I played, it is very well designed. It's jaw droppingly gorgeous. But like you said, because of the slow ploddingness to it. I appreciate it to a degree, but for the most part, I go, it's kind of off-putting for me because like you said, I don't really have the kind of time to to do that. When I play a game, I want to feel like I'm progressing or making some kind of progression here. And that's not really what I get out of Red Dead Redemption 2. And I'm not going to say it's a terrible game because of that. I think that that definitely hinders, uh, not hinders, kind of hurts it a little bit, at least with me. And it's why I've, played assassin's creed odyssey much more than than i have red dead redemption too so and again it makes you almost not want to explore because you like you said you want to have that sense of accomplishment maybe sometimes you're like okay i'm going to jump on the game for 45 minutes to an hour and i'm not going to try to accomplish any story missions okay i'm just going to kind of explore the world Mm -hmm. but that's making what's already a 90 hour game you know 140 hours Mm -hmm. and to each his own, you know, that's, sure. that's a lot of bang for your buck, but especially even for guys like us who, I don't know what you call us, podcast hosts, influencers, or whatever, in order to play a lot of games, we, we can't really afford to always do that, mm-hmm. so yeah, you just take it, it is what it is, uh, it just means I'm not going to probably see any, you know, everything in the game, but I'm still going to see a lot of it with right. how I'm going to play it, so it's just a it's the long haul. It's like what, how I played The Witcher. It's how I play yeah. Persona. You just play That's them in point. seasons. If I want to set it down for a little bit and come back in two to three months, all right, I'll, I'll just have to do that when if because there's a couple other games I want to get my hands on before the end of the year. Mm-hmm. And if that's the way it is, that's the way it is. It's okay. It's uh, again not everyone. I don't. I shouldn't expect everyone to game like Adam mm-hmm. in the same way that they shouldn't expect me to game like everyone else or like them. So yeah. You just it's try to be understanding in those things. Yeah. And just a little side note of this. I mean, I think that's important for us to remember is that we don't have to play everything, you know? So, I mean, if, if we're feeling something else, then, then we'll play something else. And so we'll just live vicariously through everybody else <laughs> that's playing it. That's pretty much what I've been doing with, with Red Dead. Um, but it gives me an idea to do a future topic. So, dear listeners, you'll have to remember this. Someone write it down for me. Uh, maybe we could do a topic on like what makes a good open world game. Like what are things that we look for in those kind of games and, and bring that into the discussion, even breath of the wild a little bit, uh, because they have a very nonlinear approach to its gameplay as well. Um, do you have anything else to add about red dead or. No, those are my general okay. thought, thoughts. Eventually I'm going to, you know, the more I get into it, the more I can kind of talk sure. about the story. We'll do an episode at some point. Yeah. But again, very very good game don't ever hear me like it's 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 a really good game it's just currently not my you know game of the year but i haven't finished it so it shouldn't fair enough fair enough well i've been playing my game of the year which is constantly rotating in and out every week with a different game so but the pretty much the majority of what i've been putting my time into is Assassin's Creed Odyssey. I've been getting Monster Hunter Generations in every now and then when I need a break, but nothing really worth talking about. Now, Assassin's Creed Odyssey, I've, I think I'm approaching the 50-hour mark total with this game. And I'm not going to lie, the first 30-some-odd hours with this game has been a bit of a roller coaster of me getting just kind of getting to grip with 
just the different things because they've changed this game considerably from Origins. Origins was the first foray into the RPG mechanics for the series, and this is one where they just crank that up to eleven. You're you're trading gear in and out for the different stats and the perks and all that jazz. Uh, you're exploring things, the Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild style, with no ma- no map markers unless you get to a synchronization point or you come across it very organically. It, so here, here are my thoughts on Assassin's Creed Odyssey as someone who's really played pretty much every single game in the series, at least mainline games. Um, it is good. I like the story in it better than Origins because it's just it's just structured better, it's paced better, it flows really well. As far as the characters go, this is where this is my first contention point of contention with the game is I wish they would have just picked one character and focused on them and fleshed them out. If they wanted to have Cassandra be the main character, which from what I hear she is the canon character, just have her be the only person you play as and then uh, flesh her out throughout the rest of the game and just let her do that. But what they've done is you can play as Cassandra or Alexios, who are siblings, and from what I understand, they have the same exact dialogue choices, the same exact lines, so you're not really getting anything new outside of Cassandra being the better voice actor. So it just it depends on how... It doesn't really matter at that point. But what I've noticed is... They didn't necessarily think this all the way through with some of their dialogue choices, and I'm not I'm gonna be intentionally vague to avoid spoilers, but there's been several scenes that I've come across where playing as Alexios, it's a little weird. Like it doesn't fit that character. And then there's other scenarios where there's these little inconsistencies where if you're playing as Cassandra, it doesn't make sense. And so I just I wish they would have picked one character and then went with it. But as far as everything else goes, combat's great. Combat is similar to that uh, Dark Souls-esque combat kind of thing that they had in Origins. Really good, really fun. Uh, They give you different abilities to where you're pretty much a superhuman. There's one move where you, because this takes place well before any of the assassin stuff, you have this uh, spear tip that you use that's kind of like your your wrist blade. And so you can throw that, and then after you throw it and it sticks into an enemy, you teleport to them to assassinate them kind of like Final Fantasy 15 with Noctis's uh, blade thingy. It's super flashy, it's super cool. There's moments where you'll come across a group of enemies trying to save somebody and you throw that out there and you take out all three guys and it's just it's so flashy, it's so cool and I love it. The naval combat stuff is back from Assassin's Creed Black Flag, super fun. It's really good. You can customize the ship like you could in the past game and of course it's fun to do. You can get different crews and things like that. Overall, I'm enjoying the game, 50 plus hours into the game now. I was struggling with it a little bit, and I think that was because I was trying to rush through the game just so I can get to Red Dead, and I reached a point 30 hours in where I was just saying to myself, I'm not going to rush this game because I'm hating the game because I'm rushing to it because anytime I do a side quest, I'm like, I hate this. I want to get to Red Dead. I just need to kind of calm down is really what I needed to do. And so once I did that, I was enjoying it, having a blast, exploring things, killing giant bears and doing all that stuff, crafting armor, not crafting armor, but getting legendary armor from taking down different cult members, which are the substitute for the Templars in this game. Really, really cool game, really good open world game. They are supporting the game really well too. They actually just released an uh, um, kind of like a blog video thing on YouTube today, the day that we're recording it kind of detailing the changes they're bringing in November, and it shows that they are clearly listening to the community. They're going to make things better and add in free content like new monsters to fight, new quests, new epic uh, mercenaries to fight, new ships to go after. It's just they're they're really supporting this game uh, and, and giving players what they want and listening to feedback and making changes accordingly. And it's it's cool. It's might be the best game in the series, actually. I'll go out and say, I don't know if I'm going to say it's my game of the year, though. Like, I'm enjoying the game. Don't get me wrong. But in a year where God of War, Spider-Man, Celeste, those kind of games exist and came out, it's a great game. But I don't think it's up there with those other games. But that being said, don't let it stop you from playing the game. And dear listeners, if you want to check it out, check it out. And I will say this, though. Cassandra is the better character of the two. Her voice actress... 
she nails it. She is the way that she uses her voice to it. She's just really good at what she does. Alexios sounds like me at nine years old trying to sound like a man. It sounds weird. It sounds like a fake Arnold Schwarzenegger. And so it's, it is what it is. But that being said, if you guys are interested in the series or if you've been curious about it, definitely rent it and see what you think. But I think it's safe to say that if you enjoyed Black Flag or Assassin's Creed Origins, you're going to love this game. You really... Question for you. What's up, buddy? So, I, and I've, been, I've been trying to get a question, but apparently my mic wasn't working. I'm like, why is he not responding to me saying, hey, I got a question? <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just ignoring you, Adam. That's what I do. I'm like, dang, dude, this dude's savage. Yep. But, so, if you play as one character, is the sibling in the story still? Or is it like that person doesn't exist? So, the other sibling is in the game still up to a certain point. And that's all I'm going to say because they tie it into the story really intricately. So I don't want to do any spoilers, but yeah, the other sibling is in the game that you don't pick. Okay. So but. they're still around the world. It's just like you said, and, and it, and it kind of makes sense that with how that works again, there may be some very minor dialogue option changes, mm -hmm. but it's like, they've just made it where you can kind of substitute one in for the other either way. Yeah. So, but I mean, I've heard a lot of good about the game. It's I wanted to play the um, Origins. I wanted to play mm -hmm. it. Maybe I'll get to it at some point. Odyssey's definitely uh, it's at my library, so or it's supposed to be coming. So there you go. Same with Origins. So that'll be a game that you know of my priorities. I'm looking at you know finishing the year. Okay, we got Red Dead. I really want to get to Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Still, we got Smash coming out. You know, potentially Hollow Knight. Try to get to that. Yeah. I don't know if I'm going to get to it this year. Um, that also just says something about the amazing amount of games, good yeah. games we've had here towards the end of the year. I mean, we haven't talked about Pokemon Go. Nope. I don't know if I'm going to get to that or not. I, I definitely won't this, be. I, th I thought I would, but it's not going to happen. Yeah, but this game, I mean, it's definitely one I want to check out. But again, it sounds massive. And, you know, hearing people say they put all this time to it, I'm just like, uh, I don't have time for that right now, for and, sure. And see, and that's the thing that I like about this game the most, is that whereas I felt like I wasn't making progress in Red Dead Redemption 2, in this game I feel like I'm constantly making progress. And, you know, I, I put 50 hours into the game, but I've done a lot of stuff. And granted, 10 of those hours was on a playthrough with Cassandra. So take that for what you will. You know, your mileage may vary, but it just, it, it's paced better, in my opinion than Red Dead Redemption. It's not the slow, uh, methodical kind of game. It's this, you know, you run, boom, 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 knocking things out. And it's just uh, very, it's much more fast-paced. So, yeah. But take that for what you will. Adam, man, we also like to read on this show. So brought to you by Gareth Evans, supporting us at the $25 tier on Patreon. Thank you so good, sir. What have you been reading, Adam? What you been up to in the book world? Uh... Me and me and the, the wife have been reading Andrew Murray's Abide in Christ together. Still, it's been a, a good good thing to get to do together. Um, I'm about to start reading. I've, I've got to start. I'm a little bit behind. I've got to read it by the end of the month. Uh, the Gospel Comes with a House Key by Rosaria Butterfield, a book on hospitality. My wife loved it. I'm excited to get to read it. Hopefully, I'll be able to give you guys a good recommendation for that here in a few weeks. But in my in kind of my devo time. I've been walking through the book of Luke using the Christ Center Exposition series. Um, this one's written by Thabiti and Abiwale. Um, and I was reading through it the other day in Luke 11. And, you know, I pro this probably isn't the right, because it would definitely probably the, not the right way to be thinking about this aspect of prayer. Um, because, you know, we often hear pray without ceasing, uh, you know, bring requ your request to the Lord. But I heard an analogy-ish of ones where, this this kid was at, you know, they were praying and the mom asked the kid for a prayer request. He gives a prayer request. The next day they do it again, but the kid doesn't say the prayer request again. And the mom's like, well, why didn't you ask for that prayer request? And the kid was like, well, God heard me yesterday and God never forgets. So I didn't feel like I had to ask him again. And I'm like, huh, like, that's interesting. There's a degree of that where it's definitely true. God dear, did hear us, mm -hmm. and he doesn't forget us. And I kind of focus in on that too much where I'm not going to say I haven't prayed for things multiple times. I I, I pray for the same things often, but I didn't want to be for the sake of like, you know, just using the same words on and on. Uh, I'm just praying repetitive prayers. 
I've been a little bit maybe guarded in, in how I pray for some of the, the repetitive things. But then I was reading in Luke 11, and it's the story of the guy. He's he's had a friend come from out of town unannounced, but he doesn't have bread. And so he goes to his neighbor's house, and oh, let me pull it up real quick. And he asks his neighbor for bread, but his neighbor doesn't bring it out. Let me see, I'll just read it real quick. He says, uh, which of you has a friend? We'll go to him at midnight and say to him, friend, lend me three loaves. Or a friend of mine has arrived on a journey, and I have nothing to set before him. And he will answer from within, don't bother me. The door is shut, and my children are in bed. I cannot get up and give you anything. I tell you, though, he will not get up and give him anything because he is his friend. Yet because of his impudence, um, he will rise and give him whatever he needs. And I tell you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. For everyone who uh, asks receives, the one who seeks finds, and to the one who knocks it will be opened. What father among you, if his son asks for a fish, will instead give him a serpent? And if he asks for an egg, will you give him a scorpion? If then you who are evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will Heavenly Father give uh, the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? And so it just kind of, you know, in the commentary, kind of six, kind of reminded me of like, there is a consistency to our prayer that matters. Uh, you know, this this neighbor didn't get up and give him the bread the first time he asked, but because of his consistency, because of, you know, the ESV says impudence, because he was, he con- continued to ask him with passion, I can only assume, Lord, you know, neighbor, give me this bread that he gave into that, you know, the sim- similar thing with God. God, again, we know God is never changing, and he, but he hears our prayers, prayer being that kind of interesting thing of God knows all, but he requires us to pray. So we do it out of a, you know, out of a willful obedience and trusting of the Lord. So prayer has many aspects, but it was just a good challenge to, and a reminder to me of like, you know, there is something to consistent prayer for, for things in, when you're in need. Uh, and I think that consistent prayers for praise, consistent prayers of confession, instead of just being like, you know, the trap that I have fallen into. And again, I don't think, I definitely don't think it's right or perfect by any means, but I'd say, you know, I've prayed for that. God heard me and I can, I can leave it and trust God. Yes, I can trust him, but there is a pattern of consistent prayer in the Bible, even for things that you've already prayed for. So, uh, it was just a good reminder to me as I, uh, I was just evaluating some things that I've kind of thought and kind of lived accordingly in the past. So uh, it was just something that stuck out to me the other day that I wanted to share with the group. Right on, man. That's good stuff. Uh, as far as what I've been reading, this kind of ties into last episode talking about praying for our enemies and things like that. Going through just uh, my devotional thing as well, uh, the daily moments of strength for men that's put out by... I can't even remember what it is. I think it's like walk through the Bible or something like that. I can't remember the company. Uh, they brought up this this verse talking about, because I think they kind of knew this was going to come out around election time in the year. And so they they gave this ver they put this verse in there from 1 Timothy 2, uh, verses 1 and 2. It says, first of all, then I urge that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgivings be made for all people. For kings and all who are in high positions, that we may lead a peaceful and quiet life, godly and dignified in every way. And this kind of got me thinking a little bit, Adam, kind of like how, how we talked about last episode. We live in this culture of you either hate, hate, hate or something, or you either love, love, love something. And you see this a lot on, on Twitter. It's this thing of where, especially when I see it among Christians, we decry or put someone on blast, but it makes me wonder how, how, how many times have you prayed for this, this person that you are railing against whoever it is, you know, uh, g- tying that with the verse that we should pray for our enemies. I don't see a whole lot of this kind of going on, at least on social media. And maybe it is, and it's just behind the scenes and I don't see it, but it just definitely doesn't really uh, support that at all. Mainly just my thing is that, that, I'm, that I'm thinking of and kind of wrestling with is that if this, this idea of it's fine that we give criticism where criticism is due, where it's needed, 
for certain people in in different positions or or authority settings. But if we're going to complain about it, how often are we actually praying for them as well? Because I think that if we're spending more time venting and sorry for the word here, word choice here, but if we're just complaining and whining about someone or something, but we're not taking the time to actively pray for them that God would give them wisdom or God would open their eyes to their sin, if we're not doing that and all we're doing is whining and crying and tweeting about it, we're not really doing anything. You're not really helping, you know. And that's kind of been a uh, struggle for me. I don't really do that on social media. I am pretty quiet on social media. But amongst friends and my wife, you know, that's where I'm a little more vocal. And it got me thinking, you know, if I'm going to complain about something, I should probably, or complain about something or someone, I should probably pray for them first. You know, I don't know. That's what I'm working through. Yeah. Kind of a. Again, it's hard to, um, it's hard to hate. It's hard to, uh, I guess, I mean, it's easier to be, I mean, I don't want to say easier. You can still be critical of people if you're praying for them. Right. But it's definitely hard to hate someone you're praying for. Yeah. I think that's a way that God uses it to tenderize our heart, knowing that God loves that person, that we love that person because God loves them. Now, again, we may do bring some, uh, but again, even in our criticism, we can do it with more graciousness. Exactly. If we've prayed with them. Yeah. And so uh, I think you're hitting a lot on the head. Yeah. So, and I'm not saying we should, we shouldn't be critical. I mean, definitely bring that in, but kind of like what you said, you know, there, there's a difference between, uh, there's a difference between how you, uh, how you approach it when you're praying and when you're not praying. And, and from what I've seen online, it doesn't seem like there's a whole lot of praying going on, but I could be wrong. Could be wrong. There, there's a lot of strong personalities out there that I think, uh, we would probably disagree on, on a few things and how you approach that kind of criticism. but. That's just what came up. That's what I've been thinking about for the past really a uh, couple days now and uh, just going through that. So good stuff, dear listeners. Uh, Adam, let's get into it, man. Let's get into the topic of the show brought to you by Dear VIP David Skinner. You know, we've heard a lot of rumors, confirmations, speculations about next gen consoles, man, which is kind of weird because I'm still in the mindset of PS4, Xbox One is still like the next gen systems. And mm-hmm. so now hearing this talk and starting at least of next gen consoles, it's kind of cementing in and, and grounding me mentally of we're in the current gen. The next gen is coming of gaming systems. And so let's just kind of, let's kick back a little bit tonight, man. Let's just talk about what we want or what some of the things that we think about these next gen systems. You know, mm-hmm. and since uh, and we'll just go by the notes we have here, man. We we have heard some confirmations from Nintendo saying that they're going to release a updated Nintendo Switch next year. Well, what do you think, man? Do you think the Nintendo Switch even needs to be updated? If so, what are some things you would like to see in a new Nintendo Switch or a Nintendo Switch Pro, Nintendo Switch X? I don't yeah, know I think it. a lot of what you're Again, it's it's weird to say new because it's still going to be Switch, you know, Nintendo Switch right. major. You know, mm-hmm. you know, it, there's not going to be all the changes are going to be for the most part relatively subtle. Yeah, you know, there's I think one thing we look at, you know, is display. You know, a mm-hmm. lot of people have talked. Okay, they could increase the display both in resolution, but also in you know, like you said, do we see a Switch Pro? Is there a, you know, I personally don't know if I want a bigger handheld yeah. um, to carry around. I think it's it's really got a, a good size right now just for the the carry, you know, because the bigger it is, it's just another bigger item in a bag that you're carrying, um, I think. But, again, if you're someone, you know, who's mainly playing it at your house, even in handheld mode, you don't really care so much because if the wife's got the TV and you want to play something, maybe a bigger screen's not bad. Yeah. So I think you could potentially see a little bit larger display. That That's another option. I think you've also heard some rumors of, you know, do they do a one of the other? They could either do a dockless version where mm. it's only handheld and it doesn't come with the, the dock. Or you could potentially, uh, I wonder if you 
could ever find just the home console version also. You know, there's some people that, which is, is crazy to me, you know, there's probably some people that have left it docked and they only play it when they're sitting on their couch. When, from my personal experience... I can't imagine that. That'd be weird. It would be weird, but from my, you know, from my experience, I play a lot of it on the go. You know, I've got this nice pro controller, mm -hmm. but I play it so much when I'm traveling and whatnot that, you know, I could potentially be fine without ever having to dock it, I think. I really think I could treat it in a, oh, as wow. a fully handheld. So there's there were some rumors of, okay, let's cut the price down a little bit and let's go just handheld. You know, it doesn't come with a dock. Hmm. It's it's a legit mobile device and you can and you can use it on the go. So I think you look at screen resolution, you think you look at maybe a little bit bigger screen, you look at handheld only. Those are a couple again these aren't major adjustments, but I think these are some minor upgrades or options. You know, mm -hmm. you think of the 3DS. The 3D, uh, 3DS has had a couple different, you know, iterations. They've got the 2DS. They've got the XL. They've got the the smaller version. They've got the 2DS. And so Nintendo likes to give the people options. True. So I think we can begin to see a lot of that with the Switch come. You know, it's not be happening this year, but come middle of next year to fall, I think we start seeing a couple different options of the Switch. Now, I've got some other ideas also, mm -hmm. but I kind of want to throw it back to you. You got any other thoughts before I just keep rambling? No, well, I mean, I've got a few. I think one of the things that they definitely need to add, because I'm looking at mine right now, is some kind of Bluetooth capability, I think would be good. Oh, oh. Or even... Unbelievable. And this even this isn't really even a switch proper kind of upgrade but i think if they should definitely update the pro controller to include some kind of headphone jack or something because when yes. i when i play dog one of the two at least one of yeah, the two one of the There's two no reason i can't talk to my fr you know in fortnite exactly the fact that i had so I was gonna bring discord the chat with my friends because i'm playing my pro controller and I, it doesn't have either that doesn't have a headphone jack, mm -hmm. and I can't go Bluetooth to the actual system. Yeah, is the most absurd thing I've ever. Yeah, I've ever had in my life. And it's so weird because the system really is so mobile. You would think that it would have that kind of thing in there. And sure, you can buy adapters and stuff like that for them. But like, I don't want to have to buy adapters. You know, that's part of the reason why yeah. I'm, I'm away from Xbox because I had to buy several adapters to get a couple things to work headset related. That's one thing that I would love to see. Another thing that I had earlier, but I couldn't remember, is, uh, yeah, I just can't remember what it is. I, I don't really know what you would do. Maybe put a beefier processor in there to kind of uh, get better graphics out of it or something. Do you but, think they uh, start with maybe uh, they move up from the 32 to either 64 or 128 internal hard drive? Yeah. That's a possibility, but I mean, that's the thing is I'm trying to remember what storage is actually in mine, and I haven't even used a quarter of it, and I download all my games to the Switch, so I don't, I don't really know. Well, that's know. what I'm saying. If you have a 32, you would have, have, you would have got it full. Yeah. 32 is still, even though, you know, a lot of people go digital or physical, whatever, 32 mm -hmm. is almost, it's so small. I think they at least go to 64. I've got a 128, and I feel really good about that, mm -hmm. you know, moving forward. Like, I don't know when and if I'll ever get that full. Oh, that's what I but, have, too. I so giving some people some space on that, I think, is is an upgrade that needs to come. I mean, they did it with the Wii yeah. U. You could get a 32 gig or an 8 gig, and I'm just like, seriously? Why are you selling an 8 gig system? Like, that yeah. is the most That doesn't thing. make sense. In 2018. In a day where, where in, in, in 2018, we're memory is really not that much yeah it's really not that expensive of a thing to, to increase it's and maybe they think that's why we've got the the you know the sd slot where you can do it yourself mm -hmm. but it shouldn't necessarily be a necessary so so those are some general thoughts that i would i would definitely agree with you on yeah so the only other thing i would add is update the left joy con to actually be a real d-pad and not these four separate buttons because it drives me mm. nuts playing games like hollow knight for example which by the way dear listeners if you want to win a copy of hollow knight on steam uh tweeted us hit the facebook group with trg let's just do trg night 
Uh, first person to send us that hashtag gets a copy of Hollow Knight on Steam. T R G Knight K N I G H T. And then you can just, I don't know, give us a reco for a show. Give us your favorite snack food. I don't know. Just have something funny in the in the message. Hashtag TRG night. So there's that. I mean, do we want to say anything more about the switch or do we want to No. Is that a, is that also for those dear patrons also? Because they kind of get that early leaker. Is this gonna be they kind of get their own giveaways already? This is just for the old everyday listener. Yeah, let's do this for the everyday listeners. I've got something else planned for the patrons. So like I said, I went into Humble Bundle and kind of went crazy in that shop that, and I probably shouldn't have, but I did it anyway. You guys are going to reap the benefits of it. So there you go. Um, you want to move to the PS five? Let's go. Let's go to the PS five, man. Here's the thing that I want to see from PS five. And this is something that we've seen from our uh, patrons as well. I'm going to pull up some of the responses we got and really just, it, it, it's a common thing. Backwards compatibility. If PS five comes out and I can't play PS four games on it, yeah. I, I don't know what Sony is going to be thinking at that point. You really need to have backwards compatibility, which Micah Hendricks says that they obviously need to address backwards compatibility. He writes on Patreon, the PS5 should play PS4 games, though I'm not holding my breath for anything PS3 and earlier. Personally, I want to see a PSVR 2. Other than that, I don't have anything huge. Just keep the price at $399 and it'll be all good. I don't We'll get to the price thing here in a second. Yeah, but, we'll get to the price. But Adam, man, what are some of your things? What are some of the things you, you, know, one, you want to see? Yeah, one thing that I think uh, hopefully will be a, a pretty much a given is, you know, for people who are want to get into the VR, you know, I think VR is going to be a big part of the PlayStation 5. Mm-hmm. It should be built-in compatible. You know, I know a lot of the PR or the VR headsets come with a little box. Mm -hmm. But if you have the PS5, that should be an an optional hookup. Mm -hmm. I know you can't go in and take all of those out, but less cords, you know? That thing's going to be powerful enough where you kind of have to get that with the PS4 because it kind of gives a little extra boost, I think, Mm -hmm. performance-wise, to be able to run the headset. So just thinking from a VR standpoint, it's got to be built-in, you know, built-in, where, yeah, you maybe you plug in via the USB ports, but there's not a box and three other cables that you plug in. It's pretty simple. I mean, mm-hmm. that's what makes the PlayStation VR accessible compared to your your other VR headsets where you've got cameras uh, and all these different hookups. So I think that's one that was kind of coming to, to mind. You know, one that I'm, I would be interested to see, and I kind of want to get your opinion on this, what do they do with the DualShock 4? Do you think that they kind of continue to tinker with and adjust it, or do you think they keep a, a, a pretty similar form factor as the DualShock 4? Uh, because I like the, you know, I've actually become a pretty big fan of the touchpad on the PlayStation controller, mm-hmm. especially if I'm text input. Man, yeah. you can type in stuff pretty pretty fast with that, and you know, not a ton of games use it for swiping and whatnot, and not, I'm totally okay with that. Also, mm-hmm. so I'm, I, you know, I've I've really grown to like the the DualShock Four. But what do you think about that? Do you think that they'll come in with a maybe another iteration of the controller or keep it kind of standard as similar to the PlayStation Four version? I think they'll probably keep it fairly similar because it's a great controller. It really is. I think what they'll do is get rid of that touchpad and the light bar. Only because, well, no, if they keep doing VR, they might have to keep that in there now that I think about it because that uses that. So, yeah, I'm not really sure now. That's the route I was going to go down, but I, I've got nothing out. I guess maybe take the speaker out of it because who uses the speaker on it, really? Sometimes it's actually annoying. Yeah. And like a distraction from the game. And some games, they use it maybe pretty, you know, better. Right. But a lot of times I feel like the sound coming out of the controller is a distraction. Well, More than like an immersion experience. Yeah, and I even have it just turned off all the time. What's nice is there's some games, I think Horizon Zero Dawn did this, where you would start an audio log of some sort and it would play through the controller. So as while you're playing, you still are listening to it, which is cool. I love that implementation of it. I just haven't seen a whole lot of people really use it outside of that. So yeah, I'm not really I'm not really sure what they can they can do to it. I mean, there's 
people over there. There's engineers over there that are smarter than I am that'll yeah. definitely make it better. But I think it'll be fairly similar. Uh, I don't know how they can make it more ergonomic, as people will say, because I think it's it's one of the best controllers out there at the moment. But yeah, you know that's that's what I think about that. Well, let's talk uh, teraflops. You know, everyone the teraflops, word. the flippy floppies. Um, what are we thinking? I mean, of, I think it's got to at least you know at a bare minimum, it should match the Xbox One X. You know, thinking realistically, it should surpass that. Mm-hmm. So you know, you know, a lot of things we look at is 4K, 60 frame per second natively. Um, do you think we get to that point pretty easily in the PlayStation Five or? Is that still really a tough benchmark? I mean, I know our PC brethren yeah. are saying we're running this all the time, so it's you know it's crazy <laughs> that consoles can or whatever. They'd... But um, what do you think in regards to the the meat of the machine? Yeah, I think our PC folks are pro- would probably say like they've been running this for two years now. Um, yeah, I mean, it's definitely got to be better than the Xbox One X. If it's not, I will be very surprised. Because everything I've read and seen about the Xbox One X is that thing's a powerhouse. It is a juggernaut, as you will. That's one of my fa- new favorite words: is juggernaut. And it, it's it's got to be powerful. And we've got to get to a point. I mean, here's the thing. Here's the thing that I'm concerned about. It's still 2018 on the PS4, the Xbox One. We still have a hard time getting games to run at 60 frames per second consistently. And I think before we even get to 4K, you've got to get games running at that smooth of a frame rate first. Granted, on PC, most things you can do that because you have the added power. But at the same time, I'm not going to hold my breath. I think it's still going to be a struggle with the 4K. Now, I think Xbox has found a way to do it, but it's the it's the thing where, yeah, you've got the power, but now you've got the developers that need to kind of work with it long enough to figure out what's the best way to optimize their games to take advantage of that power to really get it going at 60 frames per second and then running at 4k as well you know because the things that i've seen is that you have to disable certain things on these consoles to get them to do that you know whereas pc is just you can enable everything if your system can handle it and it's good to go so we'll see i I, i'm not much of a hardware guy so we would probably have to get someone on here like zach uh who came on for our pc episode to talk about that a little bit of a uh, outside of my depth on that one, I'm just gonna say it's it's got a yeah. it's got to pack a punch. You know what I'm saying? It's got to pack a wallop. Yeah, and say. again, I don't necessarily know this from a spec standpoint either. But but you also look at games on you're like, how do they keep getting better? That's true. You know, how much more can you really do? And they just keep pressing the envelope and you know pushing it further and further. So and they just keep like, figuring out a way to do it. But um, like you said. And the and the the biggest advantage to this next gen, and we as we look at you know the, the word again teraflops, at the launching of the Xbox One X, you know, being on the front edge, that thing being a, a beefy five hundred dollars, uh, to, to buy that console because that tech, you know, loading that up still a little bit more expensive. By the time we get to the PlayStation Five and Xbox Two or whatever you want to call it. You know, they'll still be they'll be able to get above the Xbox One X, but hopefully at a cheaper price point because the tech may not be, you know, brand spanking us of new on the inside. You know, it'll be a new mm-hmm. console to us, but they can keep that hopefully that price point down by throwing in the 10 teraflops, throwing in the upgraded processors and all those things. You know, one thing that I that could be very interesting, and I don't know how or if they would ever be able to do this. Uh, I mean, it's that our, again, our PC brother would say, Hey, this is a PC, but in a, maybe a more simpler way of doing it where, uh, you, there used to be, a, there was a, a potential phone that came out uh, a while back. I think it was called like the mod phone or something like that, where you could buy all of these like accessories to the system where say, instead of a one terabyte drive, I could buy a two terabyte terabyte. And instead of having to internally go in and unplug everything, you kind of just like pull it out and it's the same form, shape, and it's got the connection point. You just kind of snap that in. Hmm. Getting to a point where with our next gen, could it truly be the last console generation where 
you know, we get upgradable memory. We get upgradable graphics cards again. Maybe similar to a PC, yeah. but the process of upgrading them is maybe more simple. That sounds similar Again, because, to, a, to a Steam box or something like that, if I recall yeah, correctly. Yeah, what's intimidating? what's intimidating to me with a PC, and again, our, our PC brother may be like, it's not that hard. Opening up my computer and tearing it, you know, taking pieces off, you know, I'm always worried I'm going to do the wrong thing. But if they make that streamlined process or if a computer company can make that a more streamlined process. And again, they may be like, Adam, it's so simple. Mm-hmm. Okay, I get it. But for your layman, for your your Joe Schmo who doesn't want to invest much time in doing that, finding a way to make those things possible and easier, who knows, who knows what we could see again where, okay, I want to upgrade my hard drive instead of taking the screws out of my PlayStation, which makes me nervous. You know, there's a... There's a, you've got your, on the bottom of it, you've got this little slot. You kind of push it in, pull it out, and bam, you, you've you just replaced your hard drive with a bigger one. Mm-hmm. So uh, you just wonder if there's ever going to be like a, a modding capability, not in the jailbroken form, but in the upgradable, similar to PC model. Um, it'll just be interesting to see, again, what that next generation kind of looks like. I feel like at that point you should just buy a PC. <laughs> <laughs> well, no doubt. And again, but then again, the, you can't consoles, play Spider Man on a PC, so you know, take that PC gamers. <laughs> well, and the consoles will continue to grow more. I mean, they're 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 trending more and more the PC direction. Honestly, that's true. So they still want to keep again. My focus on that isn't what's going on this, but the the ease of upgradability, the ease of use. The you know, why am I a console gamer, not a PC? Because I'm a simpleton. I just want to be able to hit the button on my controller. <laughs> yeah. And I don't want to have to do all these upgrades and uh, graphics updates and all that. You know, I just want to turn it on and it works. Right. If that means my graphics and specs are a little bit behind, I know I'm sacrificing that um, because I want the simplicity and the ease of use. Yeah. So, yeah, a lot of people may say they want that. But if you can figure out a way that make that potentially pot you know make that possible from a mm-hmm. console standpoint and make it easy to do you're, you're only going to be bringing in more cash or whatever company can figure that yeah. out that would be an interesting way to to make some money i didn't even think about think about that but we'll have to see how that goes um so to kind of uh wrap up at least playstation so we can get to uh, the next xbox what are let's do this? What are some games we want to see as a launch lineup? You know, launch lineups aren't typically like groundbreaking; they're more kind of tech demos than anything else. But what do we want to see, man? What do we want to see as a launch title for a PlayStation hmm. Five? You know, this is interesting because at, at this point, you start looking at the when. When do we think we might see it? Do we mm-hmm. see it next year? Do we see it in twenty twenty? True. Um, and so. You know, I think one game that could potentially be a launch game, you, you got to look at Death Stranding. Yeah. Um, I think a lot of that, okay, if we look at 2020, oh, that'd be crazy. I think it's a launch title. If it's 2019, if we're looking at fall of next year somehow, which again, there's been some rumors because they've already said in the in kind of the coding of Red Dead, there's been the, the PlayStation 5's code name was mentioned in that oh yeah so it's looking like red dead 2 is going to be a next gen game also uh if if it starts looking at 2019 you're looking at potentially last of us part two so i think those are two games to definitely be keeping an eye on Mm -hmm. um again if you're looking at 2020 maybe we see uh uh elder scrolls 6 no, nah, I don't think we'll see Elder Scrolls 6 that soon. No way. Nope. No way. They didn't show anything at E3. It was just a title card. I agree. It's 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 a while away, but 2020 is not around the corner. We'll see. Yeah, but we've also seen this in video games. There's been a change in trend, I feel like. Maybe I'm wrong. You can You can check me on this. But we've seen less from games early especially from Bethesda they've become a company that holds their cards extremely close to their chest and when they get relatively close they begin showing so they may have shown just a title card but that could be them also saying we're showing we're holding a lot to our chest and then bam they drop a major game 
So it may be further along than we think if you think of the old mentality of game development, but that's shifted a lot, man. Look at PlayStation. They don't give dates anymore until they feel pretty good about that date. And they push it back. (laughs) They may push it back a month or two, but we haven't seen the major, major delays, at least from PlayStation in a while. Yeah. Outside of dream and dreams may never come out, but who who really cares? (laughs) Completely forgot that was a game. (laughs) <laughs> Again, maybe a PS5 launch title. Surely uh, not. No. But maybe. Maybe a PS6. Let's keep it game. weird. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, it'll be interesting. I just uh I don't even know. I can't even think of what I would want. Uh, out of that. Horizon Zero Dawn Part Two. Maybe. Maybe. That would be nuts. I think is we would definitely game, see that game is in development. It has to be in development. Oh, for sure. For sure. Horizon came out, what, a year and a half ago? Has so it been that long already? Wow. Oh, yeah. Wow. A year and a half. So uh, they're, not re- you're not, they're not making that game from the floor up again. You know, they've got a lot of assets already created. Mm-hmm. So you're probably looking at a three-year dev cycle. Wow. Yeah, that'd at be most. Crazy. That'd be crazy. I think, uh, I think one game we will probably definitely see as a launch title is Cyberpunk 2077, for sure like i just i can't really see a world where that isn't on the next gen systems because i just from what i've seen it seems like they're going to really need a lot of that power and i think that that's a game we'll definitely see but apart from that like i just i can't think of anything you know apart from what apart from what you've said all i'm like i can't really do you think, think we see an old school grant i mean you think grand turismo that is playstation through and through um I hope we so. We had what Gran Turismo Sport came out. And that's it. Yeah. Was, like not too long ago. Yeah. Uh, maybe they have a new version because you always want to have a new car game come out to show off how pretty it looks. I mean, that's where they really show the muscle of a of a system a lot of times. Yeah. I could see uh, a, a next gen Gran Turismo. Yeah. I kind of hope they they follow Forza's uh, kind of way of doing things where they you have one that's a sim racer and then you have another one that's an arcadey racer with the uh, Forza Motorsport and Horizon, respectively. It just it just seems smart, you know, and and that's one of the things that I appreciate about that. And we'll get to Xbox here in just a second. Um, so I don't know. It's gotta it's gotta be some games though. I would definitely take a arcadey Gran Turismo because I need some kind of racing game because I can't find a good racing game on PlayStation. It's it's weird that there's not that many. Mm. Um, yeah. so I want to read one more response uh, from David Skinner. And then we'll we'll quickly talk about pricing and then jump over to Xbox. Uh, he says that one of the things he wants to see in the next gen is a new Vita. <laughs> Let's go. Right. We didn't even talk about a potential Switch competitor. Man, I don't, I just don't see it. I really don't. Man, just think if they did that. You keep PlayStation 4 power somehow. Maybe you juice it up a little bit more in a dock. Oh, but man. man. A handheld PlayStation 4? That would be nuts. I don't... Uh, I don't I don't want to think about it and get myself mm. excited for it. And then they Dude, don't that'd be it. so nice. It would be, be pretty so, cool. I mean, but again, I, that's it's hard to consider because the Vita was supposed to be that with PlayStation 3 graphics and yeah. a little below PlayStation 3. I mean, the Vita looked good, but they gave up on it so fast. But seeing the success of the Switch maybe is really... Again, put a little bit more money and give it, you know, actual two triggers. Yeah. You know, a trigger and two, you know, four buttons up on the top. That's and get rid of the touchpad on the back and on the screen. I mean, screens, I guess, is okay, but don't make all of your games required to have it. Man, that would be. It would be nuts. That would be nuts because Xbox, I don't see them going that direction. I mean, you've got where you can play on like your tablets and stuff like that if you've got a controller. They've kind of got that infrastructure built already. Mm-hmm. But man, can you imagine uh, a, a hybrid PlayStation console similar to the Switch? Wow. That would be crazy. I'd, wow. I'd be crazy. They would definitely have to support that thing better than they did the Vita, though. Absolutely. 100%. So, man, let's talk about pricing because we mentioned this a little bit with Micah's comment. Um, I don't see it being. 399 i see it being more 
like four ninety nine, five ninety nine. Which again, that's like PS three pricing when that launched. But at the same time, it's like I don't see I don't see how they could release a system that's supposed to be Xbox One X power levels, if not more, for less than um uh, for less than three ninety nine. Or did you say four ninety nine? Yeah, no, three ninety nine. Uh, yeah, I, I would think it's gonna be at least four ninety nine. That five hundred dollar hmm. price range, because I don't see it being less than that. If it's going to be as powerful as it needs to be, the thing with systems is systems have always relatively been known to lose money. Yeah, that's true and too. So they make their money in the software sales. So again, kind of to the point I was talking about earlier, by the time we get the PlayStation Five and Xbox Two to be better than the Xbox One X, that tech will be less brand new internally. And so I think that you'll see some price points go down. I think the the sweet spot is three ninety nine. Mm-hmm. I think that four ninety nine is just a hard pill for a lot of gamers to swallow. Yeah, for sure. I think three ninety nine is a lot more easier to handle. Uh so I, I would aim for the I think they would aim for the three ninety nine. But again you start looking at hard drive size, you start looking at peripherals. Is there a VR bundle that comes with it? Mm, Again, yeah. assuming some of the things I talked about earlier come into play of like it's it's one cord or man, somehow figuring out a way to do a, a cordless VR without latency, that would be nuts. Yeah, it would be. Um and so I think you see some pack you know, some different packages there. But I would like to hope that three ninety nine is the price point. But agree with you it could it could very well get to 499 yeah so we'll see but fellow sony ponies y'all let us know what you think about the ps5 what things you want to see and some of the games you think we'll we'll see around launch time but adam let's let's kick it over to xbox two i mean what what do you even call this thing at this point because it can't be two (laughs) uh but yeah you know the next xbox you know what 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 are what are we looking for for that? I've got a response here from Gareth. He says, uh, looking for a VR offering not built into the package like the Xbox One with the Kinect, but a low price point, or maybe the low price point being a stream-only machine. Oh, that's, that's interesting. A stream-only machine and the higher price point, but not too high, is an Xbox that takes disc, etc. Continued backwards compatibility support. Same controller as now, because, yeah, I'm not going to lie. That controller is butter buttery smooth it feels great that's an interesting concept releasing a stream only mm-hmm. machine yeah. i've never even thought about that but that's essentially well, what that's pc kind of is the, the rumors that are going around right now i mean you kind of see some of it with the 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 google chrome browser or whatever that can play assassin's creed yeah uh, there's true. been some betas and stuff that have been out there that you, you could kind of get in on i know a couple guys in the facebook group have gotten on that testing. I mean, it's it's if there's going to be a company that runs that way, I mean, it's going to be Xbox. Yeah. They've got the infrastructure. They've got, I mean, they've they run the show. I mean, just being Microsoft. Mm-hmm. And so, I think you could very well see again two different skids. You've got one that is if you want to have the console at your house um, for different reasons. Again, I don't I don't know why what the differences would be. You have that one or if you wanted one, if, I guess a big one being if your internet's not good enough, you need to have the console at your house. Yeah. But say you're in an area of the nation where you've got that Google, uh, what is it, fiber wire or something oh, yeah, like Google that. Oh, yeah, Google Fiber. Uh, where you're getting just crazy downloads and uploads. Okay, maybe you get one that's the streaming box. Again, Man. I don't know if that's what would work well for me personally. Yeah. But cut $150 off the price and get a streaming box, holy cow, you're now eating a huge chunk of the market. Because that thing should be small, it should be easily portable, and it should, you know, you got so many people going digital already, you think with, okay, thinking of their strengths, backwards compatibility and Game game Pass, these people are already going digital with with the Game Pass anyways, you're just playing to your strengths at that point. So I think the idea of a streaming console is, is very realistic. Yeah. It's very realistic within the next year and a half. Why not? not even... the, it's not going to be the only option. Right. But it will be a option. 
I was going to say, why you could even bundle the Games Pass with that, like give you a free month or three or something like that that they sometimes yeah. do. That would be, dude, that would be insane. I would be very interested in something like that. Absolutely. That would be cool. Yeah. But, so man, what are some of the things you want to see with the Xbox One, like the next Xbox? And I know we can take a pot shot right now and be like, oh, exclusives, but whatever. You know, what are some other things we want to see with the Xbox? Obviously, the Xbox One X is already a powerhouse of a system as of right now. So, of course, that would just be the next step is to get it even more powerful. But what else do we want to see from a next-gen Xbox? Yeah, I think uh, kind of what Gareth said is is good. There's got to... You got to think that they're going to try to enter the VR platform in Mm -hmm. some form. Again, knowing that they've already got a lot of things in place just from a PC standpoint. So I don't know if it's Oculus. I don't know if it's... uh, I'm blinking on some of the other ones off the top of my head right now. But you would think there's going to be some sort of cooperation there. I don't know if they'll come out with their own headset, but Mm -hmm. I got to think there's got to be some compatibility things that happen there. So I think that that's a a very realistic... uh, Whether you're a fan of VR or not, I don't think it's going anywhere. Uh, Mm -hmm. I think it's going to be around while and it's just going to get cheaper better uh and and people are going to create a a lot of cool solutions and experiences in that so i think that's and i think what you said about the power they're ahead of the game currently Mm -hmm. so you gotta you gotta keep it up yeah you know just because you got the x doesn't mean you get lax you keep pressing that envelope keep kind of keep the the weight on playstation by keeping that that standard high um, I think they're doing a lot. Again, we've already talked about on some of our episodes earlier this year. They've been doing a lot of things right between Game Pass, between backwards compatibility. Absolutely, keep up a lot of those things. I'd say, and they've already done this a lot with the S and the X, like with the Connect and stuff. Man, don't stop messing around with some of that stuff. Give us, give us the gaming console that people want. Mm-hmm. That's why the 360 was so good. It was the gaming console. It wasn't this major multimedia device that, you know, people used it for that stuff, but it was meant first and foremost for the gamer. Right. Do that with the next Xbox. And like you said, we're not taking a pot shot, but it, it, and it's going to happen. We, we've already, they, they've been buying up companies. You got to have the exclusives to come with it and what better time to announce some of those than with the new, the new system launch. Yeah. But you've got to, you can't just play the third party. I mean, you can, and they'll make a lot of money but they're not going to be competing if they don't. But I mean, they're, they're doing a lot of things, right? I think again, streaming, what's their VR look like? What's their games look like? I think like you said, the controller, people love the controller. If it's not broke, don't fix it. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, and I think, and they've, they're probably even a little, you want to think that they're a little ahead of in production than the PlayStation five. But the Xbox One X was really a big, that was more of a jump than a lot of people probably wanted to admit yeah. performance-wise, yeah, even definitely. the S. So maybe it, it'll be interesting to see their timeline mm-hmm. um, whenever it comes out in, uh, along with the PlayStation. Yeah, for sure, man. That's the thing. Um, I, I can't really think of really anything else beyond that to add. I know that I'm honestly kind of looking for a reason to go back to Xbox. And I think if they were to come out with a system with a really impressive lineup of games of exclusives, especially if you're going to create a exclusive JRPG, you know, that'll definitely get me back over there on the system. Yeah. You know, cause I, cause I think they're definitely, they are buckling down and getting, and they're not focusing on the connect, the gimmicks and stuff like that. And maybe that leads to them not even doing VR so they can focus on, on doing just games. Uh, you know, that's one of the things I like about Phil Spencer is he seems pretty dedicated to steering this ship correctly. And he's made some very good choices uh, ever since he got into uh, the head of Xbox position. So uh, it's it, the, the sky's the limit for Xbox. The, the, there's really, you can only go up from here. I don't think they can really go down unless they just, you know, make mobile games or something. I don't know. Uh, you know, it, it, so I just, uh, that's all I got for Xbox really, mm-hmm. you know, 
But as far no, as launch think, titles, you know, what do we want to see? What do we want to see? I know well, I think JRPGs, even real but... quick, one thing that I think will be interesting just to see Microsoft continue to press this envelope in regards to cross-platform play. Mm, yeah. So I think they are much more open to that, especially with Nintendo and PC. Mm-hmm. So I think that'll be very something, you know, Fortnite kind of, uh, I was going to use a bad illustration, um, kind of breaking through on that mm-hmm. with Fortnite. It'll be interesting to see how that continues to evolve, and I think it's only going to be a bigger piece next generation. But launch titles, uh, I mean, Halo 6 is probably, or whatever the next yeah. Halo is, that's probably a given. I mean, again, they love the racing games. True. You've got Forza. You know, you think, okay, big first-party titles, do they have some new ones that we don't know of? Or do we see more, more Gears? Like, you've been more of an Xbox guy in the last three years than I have. So mm. what what are some thoughts you have? I mean, I think we'll definitely see a mainline Halo game. I know they've got Halo Infinite coming out here, I want to say in the next year, I think it is. I could be wrong. But we'll definitely see another mainline entry into the Halo series that'll hopefully, story-wise, focus back on the Chief and, and be a, a good sci-fi story as what we have known the games to be. We'll definitely see more Gears. We'll definitely see Forza. Those are the, ca- those are the uh, not cash cows, but like those are the games that bring in the money, especially Forza. It just Forza, I, I'm going to say this right now. I've said this before. It's the best racing game on the market. It really is. So they're not going to uh, neglect that. They'll keep that thing going. But I think what we'll see since they've purchased so many new si- studios is we'll definitely see some new IPs that are going to be Xbox exclusives that hopefully will be up to the caliber and kind of uh, somewhat game changing, like God of War, Spider Man, and all that has been. So we'll see. We'll see what kind of what what they do with that. But I definitely think we'll see some new IPs that'll just really kind of make you go, "Oh snap! I need to get an Xbox." And that's what I'm looking for, at least. Uh, especially, like I said, you get a good JRPG that rivals Persona. I'll hop on that bandwagon. You know what I'm saying? And I'll probably start hunting down some achievements. Uh, mm. like our boy Travis in the group has been knocking those out left and right. Pricing though, what do you think, man? Same story as PlayStation? I think so. Yeah. Now they've set the precedent of the $500 console. True. So True. they could very well go high end on that. But again, it all depends on do we see the streaming console? Yeah. If they can say we've got a $500 console that you have in your house or a two hundred oh, that's such a two hundred and fifty dollars cool streaming console. Man. How much and that's the thing, I don't have no idea how much a streaming console should cost. I don't know. If it's literally streaming, it shouldn't be that much. No. But I have a hard time thinking that they're gonna launch a hundred and fifty dollar streaming console no. right away. Yeah. I'm like, surely it's gotta be more expensive. Man, that would be crazy. Cause then that would kind of alleviate the the hardware problem because you're just using cloud servers at that point, I would think. And they have that, that stuff already built up. I don't know, man. That's a game changer right there. That's making me think differently a little bit. So, Gareth, you might be onto something there. And if it comes true, we're going to label you as a prophet. And also, as someone who works at a, on Xbox, your secret will be out. We'll get you on the show. You will be our permanent third chair as our resident Xbox representative. <laughs> um Ooh. But yeah, dear listeners, let us know what you think about these systems. What are some of the things you want to see in the next-gen consoles? What are some of the things you'd like to see? What are some games you would like to see? Maybe some price points. Let us know your thoughts uh, when, you, when you get those, when you listen to this episode. I'm running out of steam, Adam. I'm running mm. out of steam. It's a good thing we are at the Recos portion of the show. Brought to you by Eric Bryan. Adam, good sir, what should our dear listeners check out? So there's... I don't think it, it's not out quite yet, but there's this new game coming out. It's got a lot of buzz. It's for your iPhone. Don't. It's this new. It's this new Diablo game. <laughs> if you love the Diablo series, <laughs> this is the game for you. Oh, you went there. Actually, oh, I have no idea. There. I'm not a Diablo fan. I played it for like two seconds and realized it wasn't for me. But it has been all the scuttlebutt. So I wanted to make a little joke there, but yeah, mainly man. because I don't have a, a reco. But yeah, check out the Diablo trailer coming up. Oh man, 
Oh man, you went there. I'm going to try the game out. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to try it out. And so I can talk about it on the show. And I want to try out Stardew for the phone, but I'm too, I'm scared of getting Mm. sucked in. See, that's the thing, man. I've already got like a 70 hour save on my switch. I am like, I don't want to do this again. (laughs) I would buy it if I could bring my switch save over. No, there's an idea. There's an idea. But I don't think you can do that. Nah, not that I've heard. That'd be good though. Uh, so, oh, good. so good. Uh, well, dear listeners, as far as my reco is, I've got one reco for you uh, this episode, and that is a board game. It is King of Tokyo. It is a game that me and my students have been playing for the past month and a half. Every Sunday night, we get together, we hang out. We talk about just just different things, and, and we play King of Tokyo. It's this kind of King of the Hill style game with kaiju or giant monsters, and you take turns basically punching each other in the face in the game, not in real life. And you try to stay, you try to be King of the Hill. You try to win by getting uh, to to twenty points or be the last monster standing. It is so fun. It's easy to pick up and play. Very easy to get into. It's one of those games that is just so accessible that you're not going to spend. It's a good one. It is a good. Have you played it? Yeah. yeah, yeah. There you if go. you can get past, okay, self conscious gamer, get past the the goofiness of the the cartoon characters. Mm, yeah. You know, if you you just got to get over that and not worry about people judging you for playing it or judging the person that asked you to play. It's a really fun game. Yeah. And it's the, a really fun game. Some people are like, oh, the characters are so goofy. It's like, man. Yeah. Don't take yourself so serious. What's funny is that's how some of my students were when we first introduced it, and now they're like, are we playing this game Sunday night? And I'm like, yeah. you know we are. And so they're yeah, they're all cool. into it. Really, really good game. I can't recommend it enough. We have just been thoroughly enjoying it, and it hit me this past Sunday. I'm like, I haven't wrecked this game on the show, and we've had like three episodes where I could have done it. <laughs> but really, really uh, good game. That's King of Tokyo. You guys check that out. I think it's by Jello Games, I think is the the producer of it. But check it out. You guys will enjoy it. It's really, really good. Really good time. Well, Adam, episode 130 is coming to a close. 130 episodes, dude. Crazy. That, mm. that number just keeps going up. Good stuff, dear listeners. Thank you for joining us along the ride here. I keep ending the shows like we're ending the entire show. I. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's been a good ride. It's just it's been until a good, next time. <laughs> until episode 131, dear listeners. Um, like again, again, ugh, I'm already out of steam. Uh, if you would like to support us, uh, head over to Patreon.com/slash The Reform Gamers. Consider lending your support there to help us uh, keep our controllers charged, keep the coffee hot, and keeping us fully stocked with Red Bull so we can get platinum trophies and play copious amounts of hours of Red Dead Redemption and Assassin's Creed Odyssey. If you'd like to check out some of our YouTube content, head over to youtube.com slash the reform gamers, where you can find episodes of this show and some of our streams and things like that. Uh, hopefully I'll be getting some other content up there. That'll be a little different uh, here in the coming weeks, but we'll see how that goes. As always, you can go over to our website, the reformgamers.wordpress.com for opinion pieces, reviews, show notes, and things like that. As always, you can follow us on Twitter at TRG podcast and like us on Facebook. But until next time, dear listeners, GG and amen.